What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Modify360 here, and in today's video this is a little bit different, but I figured that this would be a great video to explain in depth with graphics cards, just simply because I got a computer back uh, for a computer repair, that is, from eBay, and uh, basically the guy's paying me to uh, replace and fix their graphics card. This is actually the replacement card here, which is actually an upgrade. Um, it's still an older graphics card, this is an NVIDIA. Um, GTX, not GTX, it's an FX rather, 3700M, uh, and the one that's in it is a broken uh, 2700M graphics card, has a gig of uh, dedicated DDR3 memory, and this is an MXN graphics card. But I want to basically get into the detail of why it is important when you're going to pick out a laptop for gaming, why it is important to distinguish the differences between integrated and dedicated uh, graphics. Now you might be asking, well, Modify360, what is the difference and what is the importance of integrated versus dedicated graphics? And the answer is simple. This is a, uh, a motherboard that came from a, uh, an HP Pavilion, I believe. Uh, I actually upgraded a uh, laptop uh, component for my friend and we and all just got a whole new chipset. This is an AMD board, but as we can see here, here's the CPU, which is exchangeable and upgradable to an extent of the uh, socket. But that's the GPU there, which is integrated. And one of the main problems, guys, is whenever you're going to be doing gaming or wanting to expand a computer over time, you really have no leeway when it comes to laptop motherboards, especially because everything is so integrated and hard to get to for the most part that people wind up not even dealing with it. They'll literally just you know, say, okay, well, I might upgrade the hard drive to a solid state, might upgrade the RAM a little bit, and maybe on a few occasions upgrade the processor, but in all, depending on the kind of laptop, like just a standard run-of-the-mill laptop uh, motherboard, it's really not worth modifying. Versus when you buy a laptop similar to mine, I have a Clevo P, uh, P570, similar to the one I was selling. It has an upgradable graphics card. In fact, it has two graphics card slots, two MXM uh, B uh, slots, where I could actually run SLI mode. But this is an MXM2 card, one of the older models. You can tell here by the, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the gold. Um, this is just the indication that this is an MXM2 card, but this is expandable. This is upgradable. It uses its own memory. It's, uh, as you can see here, the RAM bricks, the actual GPU, and it's great if you ever do so happen to run into the issue of, like this computer here, where the graphics card burned out and it's eligible for an update. So, again, guys, a... Um, uh, um, a dedicated graphics card is definitely something great to look out for when you're planning on buying a laptop computer. Having all that being said, guys, what we're going to go ahead and do is I will show you, once I open up the laptop, uh, we'll show you the uh, component of how, or the process rather, of how to install and upgrade your new graphics card and the overall difference in appearance of this, uh, the dedicated graphics versus, again, the integrated graphics where the chip is literally BGA soldered onto the board. Similar to if I could find a spot on the back of the motherboard, uh, here, if we can see all the little uh, solder points here that are ready, like for instance, this was probably for an upgraded, uh, an upgradable option here to put another graphics chip right there with the integrated memory. So that being said, the uh, chip is soldered to the motherboard. You don't have any chance of upgrading it. And in all honesty, if anything goes wrong with it, like let's say the uh, the motherboard is faulty, if it needs a reflow or reball, where the chip literally has to be taken off the motherboard, resoldered. In the end, with the cost, it's really not worth it. So now I'll go ahead and open up the laptop, guys, and uh, we'll show you. All right, guys, I thought I'd just get you a little familiar with the computer at hand here that I'm demonstrating with the uh, dedicated graphics, as well as what to look for if you do think you have a defective GPU. Now, this is solely a GPU issue. If you ever uh, so happen to realize that there are vertical bars on the screen, uh, a lot of static, um, a lot of distortion, that is uh, due to the fact that the GPU, the actual graphics processor, is loosening from the motherboard. Now, in this case, again, using dedicated graphics, that would be this chip here loosening from the actual board. What's keeping these chips in place, guys, much like your RAM bricks and other things of that nature, there are tiny individual little solder uh, balls underneath, like, at least a few hundred. And if one of those merges or if one of those just becomes uh, loose from the motherboard here, or the daughter board in this case, um, you will experience a lot of issues somewhat like this. Now we'll go ahead and show you the client is running uh, Windows 8 Enterprise on a W700 ThinkPad. Uh, this is a Lenovo. It runs on a Core 2 Quad Extreme, which is still a pretty decent computer uh, considering it still has like a 7.2 index under the Windows rating. Um, it's still pretty good for um, you know graphic intensive programs, things like that, simply because it's expandable. Now we'll go ahead and show you back to the desktop. 
and uh, we have computer properties open so you can kind of see the vertical bars a little bit better and this distortion is simply from again the faulty GPU on the board now we'll go ahead and we'll switch back to the tile menu and as we can see here when we alternate you can see the bars very clearly so now we'll go ahead and we'll open up the computer guys and we will show you the difference between the integrated as we can see there the integrated and dedicated graphics on the motherboard as well as what to look for alright guys welcome back as we can see here the ThinkPad has been completely uh, taken apart uh, we have already taken off all the uh, palm rests we've taken off the uh, heat sinks etc and anyways as we can see here this is the old GPU that is currently installed in the system here in the MXM2 slot and uh, we already have the dedicated heat sink uh, taken off and I got Arctic Silver on my hand uh, but in either case, guys, it is uh, a great feature to have, especially, you know, props to computer manufacturers like Lenovo, Clevo, Sager, even Asus, and a few other various brands that do utilize this feature of dedicating two heat sinks and uh, um, fans for both the CPU and GPU. And you're going to commonly see these kinds of, um, you know, configurations anyway on workstation replacement laptops, laptops like this size that are going to be 17 and up. Um, in display. Um, so it is, again, it's a great feature and it's a great utilization, especially if you're eligible for a GPU update within your same graphics card slot. Again, this would be like an MXM2 versus the latest model, which is an MXM 3.0B. Now, I will be putting all the links in the description, guys, so you guys can kind of, you know, get a general understanding. As some of you might be like, what? What the hell is an MXM2B? And, you know, I didn't even know laptops could use dedicated graphics. Because it is it is great, especially if you're going to be looking in the market, in the niche market for a laptop um, or a desktop replacement. You know, if you look, if you need to be mobile yet have all this power to use high intensity, you know, high resource hogging programs, this is definitely a great uh, way of, uh, of achieving that. So anyways, this is the old GPU, guys. As we saw here, uh, that was displaying all of the uh, the vertical bars, all of the uh, distortion on the screen. Again, this is a um, NVIDIA FX 2700M, which only has 512 megabytes of dedicated memory. So we're going to go ahead and put that to the side, and we will now install the new uh, MXM2 uh, NVIDIA 3700M, which uses one gig of uh, dedicated DDR3. And again, guys, you know, this isn't a whole lot of memory. This isn't the best graphics card in the world. It's a few years old. But considering this type of laptop, it really doesn't matter. Um, this computer, as you guys saw, is running Windows uh, 8 uh, Enterprise. So, you know, this is just really just a computer fix for someone. But anyways, guys, uh, this is the video. It wasn't so much as a tutorial on how to fix a GPU but really just a general understanding and walk around on how to deal with these kinds of issues if you ever do encounter a GPU related error, as well as if you're gonna be looking in the market again for a, uh, a desktop replacement that is mobile and has all the uh, computer um, resource utilization for uh, using programs like, again, you know, Autodesk, um, Sony Vegas Pro, Photoshop, uh, After Effects, you know, all, all these, I think I already said that, but you know, anyways, just programs that use a lot of system resource and, uh, you know, something that can be mobile and interchangeable and expandable versus the fact that if you just get a standard laptop and just, you know, cash out 400 bucks for just a standard laptop, it's really great, guys, if you just save money and, in my opinion, you know, dish out an additional 400 to even $1,000 if you can, you know, on a machine like this that is capable of just being expandable over the years. And honestly, I've seen savings because with a laptop like this, much like my Clevo P570, which again uses dedicated graphics, you can keep upgrading it as you go throughout the years without having to purchase another computer. So that is definitely something to look out for in the long run. So anyways, guys, I hope you liked this video. Hope it was helpful to some of you out there who are looking uh, for a new laptop or a desktop. And uh, again, I will have links in the description of what an MXM slot is. And uh, like always, guys, please comment, rate, and subscribe. See you guys.